Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Ladybug Squish, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description or simply go to your favorite search engine and type in Moogly Ladybug Squish, and the pattern should come right up, as well as right and left handed video tutorials. To make this pattern, you'll need Bernat Blanket Yarn, one skein each in a red and a black. These are officially called Crimson and Coal. I also used a USL 8mm crochet hook, as well as two safety eyes, 24mm in measurement, as well as stitch markers, and I filled it with a 10 inch micro bead pillow ball. You can use similar or fiber fill if you prefer. Let's take a look at our finished Ladybug Squish. Like most Amigurumi, the Ladybug Squish is made of several pieces that are then sewn together. You can see here, I just used those two colors, the red and the black. We make the main body in the red, then we make all the pieces in the black, minus of course that little smile that's optional. You can see here shining in the light, those two 24 millimeter safety eyes. These are of course optional, and if you're giving this to a young child, you very well may want to replace those with embroidered on eyes just for safety's sake. And again, if you're giving it to a small child, you want to make sure that all those little pieces are sewn on extra securely. After we make all our pieces, of course, we assemble them together. We've got the body, the belly with the legs, all the spots, the face, the feelers, and then we have a center line running back from the face all the way to where we actually end our body round. Right here is right about where that stitch marker would be when you finish your body. That'll make more sense later. So we just surface crochet right from the top center of the head all the way across to the body. After we've sewn on our dots, added our center line, sewn on our feelers and face, then we take our body and we take the belly with the legs already attached and whip stitch them together. After making the belly, you'll want to leave a long tail that you can use to sew that belly piece to the body piece. That's the basics of assembly, and it's all spelled out as well in the written pattern in plain English. Now the pieces themselves are all made using the same basic techniques, half double crochet worked in a spiral. The dots are all just one round long. That one round is the same as the first round of the belly, the face, or excuse me, the body, that's not the belly, the body, the face, and the belly. The face and the belly, rounds one through five, are all exactly the same as rounds one through five of the body. We just keep adding more rounds to make the body bigger. So they all sort of start the same way. So today, for this video, I'm going to first go over rounds one through five of the body. That's the same, again, as rounds one through five of the face, and rounds one through five of the belly. I'm going to work them up in red so that they're all a little bit easier to see, but you'll see just how simple it comes together. You'll just need to follow the written pattern to make the rest of the body, which again is just more of those half double crochet rounds worked into a spiral. And after working the first five, it should be pretty easy to see how it all comes together. After working those five rounds, I'll show you how to make the feelers and the legs as those are our newest pieces for the ladybug squish. Now again, this is rounds one through five of the body, round one of the spots, and rounds one through five of the face and the belly. So what color you're using will depend on what piece you're making. I'm gonna demonstrate here in red because it's a little bit easier to see. For round one, we begin with a magic circle. So I'm going to take my non-hook hand, my forefinger, and go over it twice towards me, just like that. Then, I'm going to insert my hook under both of those loops and I grab the loop that's furthest back, closest to my hand. I grab that and pull it just under the edge of the tail end here that I'm holding with my fingers. Then I yarn over and pull that loop through. Now my loop is sort of locked together for me. After that, I can begin crocheting. Now here we're going to chain one, but only for round one do we chain one at the beginning. After that, we work in a spiral, so we don't chain one at the beginning of any other rounds. Then, after we chain one, we can start working in our ring. So we begin with a single crochet for our first stitch. Now, because we're going to be working in a spiral, this is why it's so important to have stitch markers for this pattern, at least one. 
You'll want to have a few more for adding the legs, but at least one for making all the other pieces is really important. What you'll want to do is mark the first stitch of each round. When you're working in a spiral, you don't have that usual jog where you would normally slip stitch and join. Instead, it will just keep building up. So it's very, very easy, almost guaranteed that you'll lose track of that first stitch of the round if you don't put a stitch marker in it. So that's just super important. You can just use that same stitch marker and move it up to the first stitch of each round as you go. So after we've marked that first stitch, then we put nine half double crochets in the ring as well. So we've got one single crochet followed by nine half double crochets. So I'm going to yarn over and go right in the ring and make a half double crochet. Now I want you to notice that as I make each of these half double crochet stitches, I pull up on that loop. When we're working with this yarn, it has a lot of fuzz and texture to it. So we just need to give a little extra tug to make sure that our stitches don't pull down to be too tight. Additionally, I want you to notice that as I go into the ring, I also catch that tail end on top of my hook so that each stitch encloses both of those parts of our magic circle. This is important for pulling that magic circle closed when we're all done putting stitches into it. If we don't include that tail end, it simply won't work. So I'm going to continue putting half double crochets right into this ring until I have a total of 10 stitches. Remember that's one single crochet followed by nine half double crochets. So I'll see you as soon as I've got all those stitches made. Okay, so now I've got a total of 10 stitches worked into the magic ring. Now I'm not going to join with that to that first stitch with a slip stitch because as I've said, we're working in spirals. We don't join with a slip stitch. We'll just work the first stitch of the next round right into the top of the first stitch of the previous round. But before we finish this one up, we can go ahead and close up our magic circle. This is where having worked over that tail is so important. Now this yarn, if you pull hard enough on it, can break. And as we've talked about, it's got a fair bit of fuzz and texture to it. So you can see, I just pull it a little bit at a time, pulling very, very gently on it to close up that magic circle. If I feel like it needs more extra closing than I can get from just pulling, then when I go to weave in this end, I wanna make sure to weave it in both directions and I can cinch it up a little bit more at that time. Now, if you are making the polka dot portion of your ladybug squish, then round one, is the only round you need for each one of those polka dots. You would just go ahead, break your yarn here, use a little yarn needle to sew it to that first stitch, and make sure you leave a nice long tail. When you do cut your yarn, leave it nice and long so you can use that tail to go ahead and sew it to the body of your squish. If you're making the other pieces, you'll want to keep going. Now we're ready to make round two of the body, the face, or the belly. They're all the same. We simply make two half double crochets in each stitch around. We had 10 stitches here in round one, so we'll have 20 stitches at the end of round two. So since we're working in a spiral, we're just gonna yarn over and go right into the top of that first stitch there. Try not to miss like I did. I'm going to move that stitch marker out of the way for a moment. And as soon as I've got that first stitch there completed, get my hook out of the way there, I will go ahead and put my stitch marker right back in that new first stitch of our round. There we go. Then I want to put a second stitch right in that exact same stitch. And then we go to the next stitch and put two half double crochets in the top of that stitch. So there's one, we just go right back in that same space for a second one. And we're going to do that all the way around, putting two half double crochets in each stitch for a total of 20 stitches in round two. So I'll see you as we finished round two. So this is what each of those pieces should look like at the end of round two. And this is where it's really easy to see just how important having that stitch marker in that first stitch is, because without that there, I would have had no other clue that that was the first stitch of this round. So now we're ready to begin round three, which again is the same for all of those pieces, the belly, the body, and the face. We begin by making a half double crochet in the first stitch. So we'll want to move that stitch marker out of our way again. And then of course, as soon as we've got that stitch made, put it right back in our new first stitch. There we go. Then we come back to our instructions and we see we put two half double crochets in the next stitch. So we find the next stitch and put two in there. One and two. Now, if you're following along with the written instructions, you'll see the way this is written out is asterisk 
HDC in the next stitch. That was our half double crochet in the first, two HDC in the next, right there. That's our repeat. We begin again, repeat from the asterisk around. So we do one, then two, one, then two, one, then two, all the way around. So we would put one half double crochet in the next stitch, and then two half double crochets in the stitch after that. One, two, one half double crochet in the next stitch. We begin that repeat over, two half double crochets in the stitch after that. So we do this all the way around for a total of 30 stitches at the end of round three. So just remember to put two stitches in every other stitch, and I'll see you at the end of round three. So here we are at the end of round three. Your circle should be mostly flat, but if you find that it's cupping up in either direction, try giving it just a little bit of a tug. That last loop of each stitch that we need to remember to pull up on can try and bunch together just because of the texture of it. You can see here already, right in front of us, now that I've pulled those out, mine's already a lot flatter too. So do not freak out if it's starting to cup up. That's very normal, simply because of this yarn. We can flatten our circle out just by giving it a little bit of a tug there. And then of course, later on, as we make our body part, we will want it to start bowling up to create that body shape. But for now, we want to keep it flat. So let's move on to round four. Round four, we start right again in the written pattern with the asterisk, which means we start right into our repeat. So the first thing we do is put two half double crochets in the next stitch. So that's going to be our first marked stitch here. So again, I'm going to move that stitch marker up to our new first stitch of the round. There is our first one. I like to always just secure that first loop with my finger there so it doesn't twist on me while my hook's out of it. There we go. I can drop it right back on my hook. So there's the first one. We know we need a second one in that stitch. So there are our two half double crochets in the next stitch. Then we half double crochet in the next two stitches. So that's one half double crochet in the next stitch and one half double crochet in the stitch after that. And then it says repeat from asterisk around. So we do that again, repeating all the way around. Two, one, one. First two. So there's two right in that same stitch. Then one in the next stitch. And one in the next stitch. Two, one, one. That's our repeat all around for a total of 40 half double crochets at the end of row four. So I'll see you at the end of row four. So here we have our pieces after round four. So if you're having trouble counting your rounds, you wanna kind of look really closely for these series of concentric circles. And because counting with a spiral can be difficult, I recommend you kind of look for that stitch marker for your first stitch and count just to the side of that where you know you've just finished. It makes it a little bit easier to find those rounds because as I say, working in a spiral, sometimes especially where the spiral begins, can get a little confusing. So I wanna head away from that section and we can count one, two, three, four rounds. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more of a visual if you're new to reading your stitches. But with round four finished, we're ready for round five. And again, round five is the last round that we use for our face. Round For the belly, we'll continue through round six and through the body, we continue through round 19. But all those additional rounds are simply more rounds of half double crochet worked in the spiral as we've been doing. So let's go ahead and make round five together. We're going to start, we go back to our written pattern and refer to that. We see the asterisk half double crochet in the next three stitches. That's our first section of instructions for round five. So let's begin half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. We go into that first stitch and we need to move our stitch marker. We move that right on up to our new first stitch here. It takes just a moment, but it saves so many headaches later. So there's our first one. We need a second single one here, if you will, and a third. So we've half double crocheted in each of the next three stitches. Then we come back to our written instructions. And after that first comma, we see two HDC in the next stitch. So that's our two half double crochets in the next stitch. So there's one 
and two. And then of course it says repeat from asterisk around. So that's our repeat. Half double crochet in the next three stitches, two half double crochets in the stitch after that. One, 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 two. That's our repeat. So let's do that. One, 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 and then two in the next stitch. That's our increase. We move where the increase is located in the repeats as we go from round to round so that our circle stays a nice circular shape and doesn't end up turning into sort of more of an angular shape where all those increases line up. But that is our repeat, one, 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 two. By doing this repeat all the way around for round five, we'll end up with a total of 50 half double crochets in round five. So there's one, one, one more, and then two in the next stitch after that. So I'll see you at the end of round five. So this is what it should look like at the end of round five. Now let's take each of these pieces one by one. If you're making the body, you'll want to go back to the written instructions and follow rounds six through 19. They're just like what we've been doing here. Just follow the written instructions. We're going to continue to increase for a little while. Then we'll work even, meaning we just half double crochet in each stitch for a few rounds. And then we finish it up with just a few decreases to create that body shape. Again, it's all just half double crochets in the round, just as we've been doing right here. However, if you are making the face, then you're almost done. For the face, we add just a few more stitches here for round six. So let's go ahead and pretend this is the face together. For round six of the face, we then single crochet in this stitch marker stitch right there. I'm just going to go ahead and tuck it back there for right now. Then we slip stitch in the next stitch. And then we want to, want to cut a long tail for sewing because we can use that long tail to sew our face to the body without having to cut an extra length of yarn for it. So what I like to do is I take the yarn that's still attached to my piece here and I'll actually sort of go around the perimeter of the piece that I want to sew down about two and a half times, anywhere from two to three times, depending on maybe how difficult I think it's going to be to sew on, whether I'm worried about having a little extra yarn, but I'll just go right around the perimeter just like that and then go ahead and cut that yarn. And I find that that usually gives me more than enough to sew my piece on. So that is how we would finish up the face and then set that piece aside for assembly later. However, if we are using this little piece here as our belly, then what we're going to want to do is stop right here at the end of round five, leave our yarn attached and set up to attach our legs. So if you are making the belly piece, I recommend that you make the legs first since you'll want to make those in the same color and you'll need to cut the yarn after each one of those and you want to leave it attached to make round six of the belly. So for a moment, I'm going to set this aside and let's go ahead and make a leg together. Now the legs and feelers use a slightly different pattern than the rest of the pattern, but it's also very simple. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this leg in black. I know you probably won't be able to see some of the finer details, but as you're about to see, the pattern itself is quite simple. We're gonna start again with our magic circle set up here. I pull that loop just underneath, yarn over and pull through to lock it together. Then I'm going to chain one. Now again, we're going to be working in a spiral. So we'll want to have a stitch marker handy to mark each stitch of the round. And that chain one here at the beginning of round one is the only chain one for this piece. After that, we single crochet six times into the ring. So there is our first single crochet. I will go ahead and pull my finger out of the way here and get a stitch marker right in the top of that first stitch. There we go. So that's one single crochet. We need a total of six. Again, every time I go into this ring, I want to make sure that I catch that tail end in each stitch. So you can see how difficult it is to see in the black yarn here on camera. To help you see better in person, which is of course a little bit easier than getting it to show up here, you'll want to do some of the same things I am doing here. Have a nice white background, some nice bright light, and in person, it will make it a whole lot easier to see those individual stitches. So I'm just working my way around here. And of course I've been 
chatting with all of you. So now I need to count and see how many stitches I have made. This is where it's super handy to have that first one marked. And again, if you're having trouble seeing, use your other senses as well. Use your fingers, sort of pull those stitches apart. You can feel where each of those V's is a little bit with your fingers, and that will help you out a lot. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually made seven stitches. I made one too many. So I'm going to pull that one out right there. Pull up on that loop now to secure it. And then I can go ahead and pull that tail end closed, just as we did with the other piece. Again, I just want to be really gentle and pull that really, really softly. Now, at this point, we're about to start making our leg and it's going to be really narrow. It's not going to stay nice and flat like the other pieces that we've made. So you'll want to go ahead and weave this end in right now. Make sure you weave it in both directions to really lock it in nice and firmly because you're not going to be able to get back in there to weave this end in later. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to let it hang and just be in there. But on your finished item, you'll want to weave this in because if you don't weave in the ends on your magic circle in both directions, it risks that magic circle coming open later. Now, my squishes tend to just sit on a shelf because I'm making them for the blog. But if they're getting played with, you want to make sure they're going to last. So here we are at the end of round one. We've got six single crochets into the ring. Rounds two through six of the legs are all the same. We simply put a single crochet in each stitch around. And that's why it was really important to weave that end in right now. So again, we're working in a spiral. So we're going to go right into that first stitch. Move our stitch marker out of the way here and just go right in there with our first one. Now this is going to be a little trickier because again, we're not increasing, we're not opening up. This is going to be a really tight piece to make. So we've got one stitch in the first stitch. I can kind of I use my fingers to help me find. Okay, that stitch worked into. Here's the top of the next one. Go right in there for our next single crochet. Now again, we want to keep these tight and we want it to start curling up this direction. So as we go around, you'll want to start sort of encouraging your fabric to go that way. Otherwise, it's just going to be really difficult to get around that circle. So there's three, four, and we just kind of keep going around five and six. There's one right before the stitch marker there. So now we have worked six single crochets and we've made round two. So if you didn't want to cut off your end after you weave it in, you can just stuff it down in the legs for a little extra body if you want to. Totally optional, but this is what it should look like here at the end of round two. Round three, four, five, and six, all going to be the same thing single crochet in each stitch around. Just make sure you keep moving that stitch marker up because even though there's only six stitches in each round, it's still just as easy to lose your place because we're not doing that slip stitch and chain one join. We're just working in this spiral. So if you wanted to, for some reason, alter your pattern or use this piece to create something of your own, you could obviously add or subtract however many rows you like to make your legs a little bit longer. The feelers are extremely similar to the legs. The only difference is we have fewer stitches. We do four stitches instead of six. Otherwise, they're the same. So we just keep going around and around here until we have a total of six rounds made. That's a little bit longer than this. I've only done three here, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and say that I've done six. That brings us up to row seven, which finishes off our legs. What we're going to do for row seven is we actually fold the piece flat and then single crochet through both layers. So bear with me here. We've got six single crochets here in this round, right? We've got our stitch marker in the first one. We just made the last one. So when we fold this flat and we go through that first stitch, in this direction like we normally would from the outside then we can keep going through the fabric and go through the last stitch we made go through both of those layers and make a single crochet then we can go to the next stitch here and the stitch behind that make another single crochet and then finally this would be the third and fourth stitches respectively that we made in the previous round and we can go through both of those layers that gives us a nice flat row of three single crochets to attach our leg to our belly 
So let's try and do that together here. Now this is where it's really handy, I think, to still have that stitch marker in there. We're just gonna go right into that first stitch. And then you just wanna kind of do your best to push through, this is the hardest one, and go right into the top of that very last stitch you just made. Now once you're through, I like to go ahead and get that stitch marker out of the way. Pull the yarn all the way through both of those layers. Pull it on up and make a single crochet. Then we go to the next stitch and go through both of those layers just straight back and make our second single crochet. And then we do the same thing going straight back. And this one's kind of funky because there's really, it feels like there's just that one stitch in between because those two stitches were next to each other. That's okay. It'll feel a little strange, but it'll work. There we go. Take our time, get it pulled through. And now we have three single crochets right there at the top of our leg. So after we've gone through there, we can simply break our yarn and set that aside. Now, if you weren't aware, ladybugs have six legs, so you'll want to make sure you have six legs made before you go to attach to the belly in round six of the belly. So after you've made your six legs and you've worked your belly through round five, then we need to break out those stitch markers and we're going to need 12 more. We're going to use these to help us set up our legs so that they're in place when we make round six. So you can do this with the legs or you can do it you know, before and then add the legs after, however you like to do it. Let's go ahead and just add the stitch markers for now. Now I've got my stitch marker here in stitch one of round five. So that will count as stitch number one. And these stitches are written out in the written pattern. So we've got one there, we want round stitch number six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Look for those top Vs. You can kind of use your fingers to help you find those if you need to. So there's six, we need one in eight. The next one is in 12, so we've got eight there, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then the next one will be in 14, 13, 14. The next one is in 18, 15, 16, 17, 18. That one that ran away there. And then we'll need one in 20, so 18, 19, 20. There we go. And then the next one is in 31. So we've got 20 marked right there. So we go 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31 is the one we mark. I always have to go back and check those instructions. And then 33, so 31, 32, 33. Next is 37, so we've got 33 there, 34, 35, 36, 37. And then mark 39. And the next one to mark is 43. So 40, 41, 42, 43. And 44 and 45. There we are. So after we've got all those stitches marked, let's take a look at what we've done. We've got stitch number one right there, and now you can see we've got six pairs of stitch markers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is where we're going to attach our six legs. Now again, if you're making a real ladybug squish, you want your belly and your legs to all be the same size, and of course, you want all six legs already made. But after you've got those all made, and you've got your stitch markers set up, then you're going to teach each leg and match it with a pair of stitch markers and use those stitch markers to attach it to your belly. Now you'll want to attach your leg in front of the belly like this, because this is the way we'll want to crochet through it with our hook. So I'm gonna take my first leg here and it doesn't really matter which side you wanna put your tail end on. Oh, there's a little fuzzy. It doesn't matter which side at all. Um, you don't even have to really weave this in. You can just let it hang. It'll be inside the stuffy when you're done. Totally up to you, whatever is most convenient. So I'm just going to take my first stitch marker here, or I can even take another one if I'm worried about losing my place, right through the top of the first of those three single crochets that we made at the top of the leg. So there's the first one now attached. I can go ahead and get this one out of the way. Maybe I'll use this one to attach this third one. So we've got the next stitch marker of this pair. We attach it to the last one of those three, those 
You can see there's three apart here. We want them three apart here on our leg. And then we just continue doing that all the way around. We've got one leg here, two legs, third leg, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So you can see how that sets us up with three legs on either side of our belly. So then we're all set to work round six. And round six is the last round of the belly and we'll work right through those legs. So let's go ahead and get that round started together. So now we're going to work round six of the belly. This is the exact same as round six of the body, except now we've got legs to work through sometimes as well. So we are going to work through one stitch when that's all that's presented, but through both layers when that's all that, when that is presented to us. So we begin our repeat with the asterisk again with a half double crochet in the next stitch. So we just put a half double crochet in that very first stitch. And of course, we'll want to move that stitch marker on up to the new first stitch of this round. There we go. Then back to our instructions, we work two half double crochets in the next stitch. There's one, whoop, let me try that again. One, and then two. There we go. Let's get my yarn straightened out a little bit there. There we go. Going back to our instructions, we then half double crochet in the next three stitches. So we find the next stitch, one, two, and three. Now you'll notice that in this repeat, it goes one, two in the next, then one, one, one. We've again moved where that increases just a little bit to make sure we keep our really nice round shape. So make sure as you think through that repeat, you start back at the beginning. We are also where we're going to work through our first leg. So let's do this repeat again together. We begin with a half double crochet in the next stitch. Our next stitch has our leg in it. So I want to, you can do this with the stitch marker in there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move it out of the way. I'm going to go first, that first stitch of the leg. Just go ahead and grab it right there. Get through both of those loops. Take your time. There we go. And then of course, that next stitch of the belly. We just wanna make sure it goes through both of those layers. Pull that loop right through both, yarn over and finish our half double crochet. So that was our half double crochet in the next stitch, two half double crochets in the next. Now we'll go through both layers. There's one, we need a second one in that stitch. That's our increase, just like that. And then half double crochet in the next three stitches. So we can get this stitch marker out of the way. There we go. Half double crochet in the next stitch, both layers. I like to just tuck that tail right underneath there so it's nice and trapped inside, or what will be the inside of our amigurumi anyway. There we are, so there's one. And now we're back to just one layer. So there's two and there's three. And then we just continue that around. One, two, one, one, one. That's our repeat for round six. And when we come to those two layers, we just go through both of them, making sure to go through the leg first. You can see how then, when we finish round six, our legs will splay out really nicely from our belly. So we just repeat that all the way around. At the end of round six, you should have a total of 60 stitches. Round seven is just like what we did at the end of the face. Single crochet in the first stitch, slip stitch in the next, then break your yarn, leaving a long tail for sewing. Again, with the belly, we'll want to make sure to leave that really long tail so that we can sew it onto the body when we're all done. Alrighty, so we've talked about the first few rounds of the body, which as I say, are just half double crochet spirals continuing on down. We've talked through the polka dots, the face, the belly, and the legs. You can see here, those legs stick right out from that final round that then is sewn to the body. We've talked a little bit about the face. You can see we just finished off right there at the end of round five. The feelers, we didn't do the feelers, but the feelers are exactly like the legs. The only difference is we have fewer stitches. We only put four single crochets into that ring, and then we only work four rounds, so they're a little bit shorter too. And then for the final round where we pinch them closed, like we did at the top of the leg, because we only had four stitches, we only need two single crochets right there at the end. 
So after you've got your face and your feelers and all your pieces made, you'll want to take a moment before you assemble them and add the eyes and the smile to the face. In fact, let's talk through the assembly step by step. So after we've added our face and feelers, our polka dots and our center line to the body, and we have finished our belly with all our legs, then it's time to stuff our ladybug squish. Now what I like to use to stuff all my squishes are these micro bead pillow balls. And I've linked this pillow ball source in the pattern and in the video tutorial. However, you can also use your standard fiber fill if you'd prefer, or whatever you like to stuff your amigurumi with. So when it's time to stuff it, we simply fill up the body with the ball or the stuffing or whatever you'd like to use, and then we want to line up our belly. I like to take that first stitch, that first stitch of each round, which we've got our stitch marker in, and sort of mac match it up to that marked stitch here or that center line, if you will, for our body. And then you can adjust it a little bit for there. You wanna make sure, of course, that it's really nicely centered over your face of your squish. That would be the primary concern. Once you've got it sort of lined up right, you can use, again, your stitch markers to attach those two layers together and then take the long end of your tail and your yarn needle and simply whip stitch through both of those layers all the way around to get to that final end and you can just weave in that last end and you will have finished your ladybug squish. And that's how to crochet the ladybug squish. Don't forget you can get the free written pattern on moogloblog.com that will take you the rest of the way through this pattern. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.